Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today talking about Wastelanders, the upcoming expansion for Fallout 76, one that Bethesda continues to tinker with and we have yet to see a release date for, although if I were a betting man, I'd say sometime in February. Now ladies and gentlemen, I do say this as someone who does not hope Bethesda will fail, although they very well may, that Wastelanders can help turn around Fallout 76 in a number of ways if it's done properly, because on the surface, it looks to address a lot of what people have complained about with this game. What we're going to be focusing on, thanks to Wastelanders, is a recurring issue that's continued to smack Bethesda in the face, dating back to the Fallout 4 DLC. Now, this will involve discussing leaks for Wastelanders, but we're not going to be adding any context to them. We're not going to be showing off where you can find these leaks. We're not going to be showing any of the leaks in today's video, because at the end of the day, I can get a copyright strike for this, right? Because Juice had it showed in one of his recent videos how he got one when he talked directly about the leaks and what was there. And so for me personally, I'd like to avoid that. This is my career path. It would be pretty destructive to the channel. So I'm just talking about the situation surrounding the leaks and how maybe Bethesda can try to avoid this in the future. So let's start off from the bottom. We have Bethesda announcing that you can play test an early version of Wastelanders on a private test server. Now, the private test servers were announced late in 2019, I think sometime around September, and that was great for the game because Fallout 76's patches were not getting sufficient testing and they were always coming out busted. So a PTS was great for the game. Today, January 23rd of 2020, Bethesda announced in an Inside the Vault article that there were going to be new arrivals coming to Appalachia. They detailed the settlers as well as the raiders, two factions that will populate the Appalachia. However, what I found most interesting was towards the bottom where they said the Wastelanders PTS is underway and they say this, Earlier this week, we invited over 500 current Fallout 76 players to join us in a private test server to play test new content and hunt for bugs in our upcoming Wastelanders update. In a few short days that the PTS has been live, we've already begun to receive fantastic feedback and in-depth feedback, as well as new bug reports to investigate. As we've mentioned before, our testing needs will likely grow, and we are looking to expand the current pool of play testers. We are planning to send an additional round of invites to Wastelanders PTS within the next couple of weeks and we will let you know as soon as we have more details to share so probably the full launch will be sometime in late February but what I want to focus on first and foremost here is the beta testers but also the number because I personally think with how substantial the Wastelanders update is going to be that 500 players really isn't enough even if you expand that to we'll say 750 maybe a thousand I think that these games, these updates can be so buggy, especially Fallout 76, that that doesn't sound like enough people to make sure that you can cover every corner. There's an excellent thread out on Twitter from actually someone from Obsidian, funny enough, detailing how fine-tuned a bug can be, like how weird it can be to trigger them, although it can constantly occur, and how it's very hard to stomp them out. So I feel like if you want to search all those out, exhaust every bit of playtesting possible to make this update exactly what it not has to be but needs to be i think more people need to continue to come in so i really do hope they up that number well above 500 but of course what's happening with this pts is something similar to what happened to fallout 4. for those of you who are og Madden fans you'll remember that fallout 4 had dlc betas you know when they did the wastelander workshop or when they did far harbor nuka world all the dlc had a beta and you'll recall that viewers were very kind to me you guys would give me your beta code so that i could review the product before it had launched and give you guys my feedback on the dlc that headed to the game and i still to this day appreciate that because that was a pretty impactful move by my audience but point being is that bethesda has consistently put trust if you will into their players hands about hey here's access to our dlc we need you to test this sign this nda Please do not leak anything, and at the end of the day, give us feedback on how we can fix this, make it better. And for those who are not aware, an NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. I personally have to sign them every single time I accept anything of early access. As the name suggests, you're literally telling the company I will not disclose any information whatsoever on what I'm playing or what I'm doing with this copy of the game until this specific date. And in the case of the Wastelanders beta, I believe because the NDA pertains to the beta, you really can't talk about it 
at all, which becomes all the more strange because as I mentioned, and we won't be showing in today's video, there have been a lot of leaks for Fallout 76 regarding the Wastelanders beta. Screenshots, gameplay, what have you, it's really starting to run rampant and Bethesda has started to stomp that out to take action to punish people who have done that, which by the way, they are well within their rights to do so. But when they're gonna take that action, I also have to wonder what they really expect, right? But it's not like in the case of me and many others, and this is no offense to anyone else, but this is our job, right? So when we sign an NDA, we have a ton to lose if I, for example, got early access to Fallout 5 or Starfield, and I broke that NDA, I uploaded my review a week before I was supposed to, I started posting gameplay, I tweeted out a ton of details about the title, and I just completely caused a pretty much shitstorm for Bethesda well before they wanted information to go out to the public because a lot of this is planned by marketing, strategy teams, and I don't mean that in a nefarious manner. They just want to kind of control the conversation and they select a day where they want that all to go out. For me, if I were to do that, bridges would be burned not only with Bethesda, but other companies would see that and be like, why would I work with this guy? He just broke the NDA with Bethesda. He'll probably do it with our company too. We're not going to work with him. So in my case and many others who do this as a line of work, we do stand to lose a lot. Whereas it's not that players who are generally just tinkering around with Fallout 76 have nothing to lose overall, but it's more so like if they break the NDA, what happened? A little slap on the wrist, right? It's not like this career altering decision, which is why a lot of times since Fallout 4, these DLC betas and now the PTS will lead to a lot of leaks. So for those who do care about Fallout 76, and I think a lot of us do care about the Wastelanders update, do protect yourself, do be aware of this, but also I would like to discuss alternatives, right? Because I don't want to sit here and just complain about the problem. And in fact, it really hasn't impacted me. It's more so that I think there are many people out there who care about Fallout 76. And I know when Starfield comes around and they start to do DLC, they will do the same thing with the beta once more. The reason I put a big question mark on all of this is we got to look at the nuclear winter update that came to Fallout 76 in the summer of 2019 because it was surprisingly good and really the only main issue I personally experienced in a lot of time I played it. Man, I streamed that game a ton when that update dropped and I played it personally a ton. I really enjoyed that update, I'll be totally honest, which is something I never expected to say. But anyway, the only real issue with it was Frog Legs off the bat. I haven't played it with the new map and everything, but when I played it in the beginning portion, it was just Frog Legs, which Bethesda eventually did fix. Overall, it felt well balanced, it was fun, it felt thought out, and that's because Bethesda privately tested this update a lot. And it showed, as I said in my initial review of the patch, it truly showed Bethesda put a lot of time and effort to test it out. And I think part of that is because there still is a bit of a battle royale craze in the industry, and Bethesda was probably licking their chops at the idea of getting a lot of people to sink their teeth into a great BR mode in their live service game, so I'm sure that's why there was an extensive amount of effort, but the point being is, A, there wasn't really a legitimate substantial leak. I had been told about it four months before it was announced, but at first I was just like, hmm, we'll see. But it wasn't in the case of like what we've seen with Wastelanders and what we've seen with Fallout 4 in the past, where just tons of leaks, footage, screenshots, everything's kind of popping out. And the reason why Bethesda would want to avoid this, right, is because Fallout 76 is the type of game that can just set the conversation ablaze, right? Like this game is already super damaged. It's a damaged product. It's really easy to be like, yep, not looking good or nope, not interested anymore, right? And so when you have a very important update like Wastelanders that you have to get right, right? I need to emphasize that they have to get it right. And let's say that someone posts a video or a screenshot of a hilariously awful bug of Fallout 76 Wastelanders not working. Granted, I'm talking in hypotheticals, but I think it's a realistic one. A lot of people will latch onto that Use it as a conversational point on how Bethesda is a joke or how this update is no different from the rest, which I totally understand and agree that it's entirely possible, but there is the chance that this is being tested on the PTS. This bug that people could see would end up being removed, and that's what I think of. And if I'm thinking of that, I don't know how Bethesda hasn't thought of that where they've said, hey, we probably shouldn't 
put this directly into the public's hands immediately because of all the blowback that can happen. I think what would have been more interesting, because now leaks with this slow, slow, slow drip feed of information for Wastelanders can lead to an issue with Bethesda where by the time it arrives, people's interests are elsewhere. I think it would have benefited them a lot more to have just stashed this away, got to work, did what they did with the Nuclear Winter update, which was probably hire a lot of playtesters, go in on Wastelanders, make sure it's nice and polished, and just drop an Inside the Vault article saying, hey, next week, this thing is out. And that would just, I think, make the player base explode with excitement, curiosity, and hopefully if it's good, even more excitement. That's just my personal perspective on it. I think they could have done a better job with how they approached the Wastelanders update, because I think ultimately this can hurt them. So that is the recurring issue that I believe continues to hurt Bethesda. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below, and I'll leave it in your very capable hands. Do consider following me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram as well while you're at it. Big thank you to all of the patrons who continue to support conversations like these. It makes me feel nice and relief knowing y'all got my back. And to those of you who gave me your time today, I appreciate you just as much. Thank you so much. And I'll talk with all of you soon. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.